Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. It has been often asked in the interviews or vivas that give an example or an industrial procedure which involves adiabatic cooling or evaporative cooling. One example in the industry can be cooling water, another is sugar crystallization, very prolifically used. So what is sugar crystallization all about and what is evaporative cooling? So first let us understand it with an example of the sugar crystallization process. Supposedly, this is the sugar cane juice initially. sugar cane juice that is being extracted and sent to a crystallizer. Now herein there is a provision which is connected to a stinget ejector system. Now what is the work of a steam detector system? Steam is sent on an extremely high pressure. So it contains a very high pressure energy. From therein when it moves and faces the construction, the velocity head and the velocity energy, the dynamic energy increases rapidly, creating a zone of low pressure because the pressure energy decreases. As per Bernoulli, when velocity increases, pressure head should decrease. So high pressure head, then the pressure head is converted into velocity head and the pressure head is lost, creating a vacuum here. So if I create a vacuum, what will happen? The air surrounding it, surrounding this sugarcane juice, just at the top of it, will be sucked in by the steam jet ejector, which has created a vacuum here. So this air, when it is sucked in, creating a void or a vacuum here, there will be a mass transfer driving force. Now evaporation, we know evaporation can take place at any temperature and any pressure, at any temperature and any pressure. So whenever this touches the vapor pressure, that is the void is being created and there is a tendency to readily form vapors to take in that space. To take in that space, evaporation can take place at any temperature. So at that temperature, there is a tendency due to a mass transfer driving force. That due to that mass transfer driving force, here the concentration is zero. Here the concentration is maximum sugar concentration, uh, the, the vapor concentration, rather water vapor concentration. So due to zero humidity or zero pressure or zero concentration, there is a mass transfer driving force and a gradient is created. Due to which there is a tendency of the water to convert into vapor and take this place. Now as soon as the water is converted into vapor, where will it gain its lambda, that is latent heat from? Where will the latent heat come from? Who gives the latent heat to this water to evaporate? You may say that it comes from outside. No, it doesn't come from outside because the entire chamber is insulated, which ensures this is insulated. This is insulated and hence the conditions are adiabatic conditions. Now you may say that under adiabatic conditions no heat is coming from outside. So heat should be supplied from within the solution itself. So if this solution is giving some amount of heat to make a portion of it evaporate. That is it is sacrificing some amount of specific heat of the remaining portion 
to supply the latent heat to supply the latent heat to the portion that is evaporating that is if this is my mass of liquid this portion is getting evaporated so the remaining portion is giving that heat by sacrificing some amount of specific heat of itself thus the remaining portion's temperature decreases and since the water is evaporating the concentration of sugar into the solution is also increasing so there is an increase in concentration of sugar and a simultaneous decrease in temperature the conditions are perfect for cooling reaching a saturation point wherein crystallization will start taking place nuclear formation will start start taking place in the solution itself once the nuclear formation ta starts taking place the solution will get thicker and thicker and thicker thereafter trying to form crystals so this is the concept of evaporative cooling you can see evaporation of one portion the heat is given by the other portion cooling the other portion so the latent heat is transferred by the fluid itself it gives itself a heat of evaporation so that a part of it can get evaporated this is evaporative cooling a process by which it gives away some of its heat to itself to get cooled it is no need of any external equipment or external compressor now you see a part of it is getting evaporated and the concentration is increasing and the temperature is decreasing and the conditions are prevalent for uh, nuclear formation and finally crystallization so when the crystals are formed it is sent to a centrifuge it is sent in to a centrifuge where it undergoes ultra centrifugation wherein due to the centrifugal force due to a high centrifugal force what happens is the sugar crystals settle and the liquid due to its viscosity tends to move to the walls and are collected from there this liquor this liquor that is collected after the sugar has been removed the sugar crystals have been removed is called the liquor the liquor okay so the liquor is the liquid that is extracted out after the sugar crystals is removed this is the process of evaporative cooling and this is the most prolific process of adiabatic cooling and evaporative cooling in the industry in sugar crystallization and a steam jet ejector is used primarily to create the low pressure zone the vacuum the vacuum okay so that's it for today if you liked our video give us a like comment share our work and hit the bell icon for more updates thank you very much that's it for today.